Hi guys. So today I'm attempting a big thing uh, on my particular channel, which is Commerce with Math. I'm going to teach you the entire economics O level syllabus by the textbook, each and each chapter. I know it's going to be a hard task for me. Uh, it's I don't know how many days it's going to take for me to do this, but I'm going to explain you the entire textbook one by one chapter. So if you guys have not subscribed Commerce with Math to learn commerce related subjects completely free. Subscribe now. Let's move on to the chapter. So today we are in Edexcel O level economics syllabus. So this is your textbook. You can see. So I'm going to bring it a bit down and show you the contents. I already done a small video part of it. You can see that particular videos link in the below description. So here you can see uh, we are going to learn today the economic problem, which is the chapter number one. So in each video, I don't know how many shares I'm going to change. I don't know how many days it will take. But I'm going to complete your entire syllabus, which is 42 chapters. Specifically, you will be expecting every week at least two to three videos I'll be uploading on this particular syllabus. So let's start today. This is a big motivation for me and it's a very hard thing which I'm going to do. I know it's going to be a lot of time. I'm going to sacrifice a lot of time with y'all. But you need to believe that every time I make something for you, I need to give it to you completely from my side as best, best as, as I can. My intention is you all to is to take you all to a good result and my intention is to help you all there are students who does not have enough money to go for classes so they are uh, students who are so much relied on their textbook if you do not have a textbook i have also given the link in the description you can download it from the amazon site and just we want to click the uh, particular link and then down i mean and then you can purchase the book so let's move on to the textbook today because youtube doesn't allow me to uh, promote free textbooks because it is a, a YouTube community guideline violation, which I can't. Uh, earlier, we, I used to put a lot of books below my description, but now I can't do that because I should follow the YouTube rules. Then only I can help you guys. So let's start with the first one, the economic problem. Now, you know that your paper is consisting of 80 marks in your paper one, which is microeconomic and business economics. So in, in today's chapter, we're going to speak about the economic problem. There are a lot of chapters under this particular uh content which is uh microeconomics the market system the business economics and then government and the economy so you can see almost uh government and the economy is 2.1 which is the paper two and you can also expect the global economy is also part of paper two so moving on to the today's topic so as i wanted to say that your paper one has 80 marks here you can see that and your paper two has 80 marks so there are four 20 mark question so these timings are one hour 30 minutes for each i will explain you how it works in future when we are doing these questions and past papers in future i'll explain you completely so you're going to learn a lot of economics topics in future with me because i'm going to complete all these part two chapters with you so it's a uh, it's a very hard thing which i have taken as a lecture it's a very hard challenging thing but let me do it for completely free for y'all for my subscribers who are willing to learn with me so today we are going to start the first chapter if you all have if you do not have the textbook don't worry you can start today with the sample textbook which i have given this is from the ed exercise that's also under the below description but if you all need to learn the stuff in the textbook purchase the textbook under the below description if not i have given another link in that you can directly click and order the book from shine institute you can get the second hand books or you can get the original textbooks so let's start the economic problem so learning objective in this chapter, we're going to learn, understand the problem of scarcity, understand the opportunity cost, understand the production possibility curve, understand cause of positive and negative economic growth. Now, as you are a new student for the economics, you might not understand a lot of terms on the first day because certain terms will be very difficult and you will feel like you're on a different alien world. But don't worry, when you are used to learn these things, you'll be okay. So you need to believe yourself. Let's get started. Getting started, the planet we live on contains Many resources that are used to be produced goods we like to conceive. However, there's a problem. Look at the images below. Goods, things that are produced in order to be sold. So on the beginning, you will be learning all the terms one by one properly. Now let's see what are the resources you need. You can see oil is there, fish is there, vegetables is there, corn is there. You can see these uh, people are going through a lot of starvation. So describe this resource shown in figure 1.1. Are there enough of these resources in the world? Explain your answer with reference to the image in figure 1.2. Now you see that the people's need is something you would have learned in your business study. It's something, the basic essential for a person to survive. Those needs cannot be satisfied in all the places because every time there's something called limitation. So this limited product is what we say is scarcity. 
So every time a product is produced, for example, if I take this pencil, there's only a limitation. They can't produce to the entire world. Even if they produce to the entire world, if a person buys, if there are 7 billion people, for example, if they if they produce 7 billion pencils, if a person buy two pencils, it will only satisfy 3.5 billion people. So that's the problem when it comes to this limitation. This limitation is known as scarcity, which you will be learning in future. In group, discuss whether your country has enough resource, draw up a list of measures that your government might take to increase the quantity of resource available. Present your ideas to the rest of the class. We don't want to do that, but I'll just say every country has problems in everything. If you take Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has a lot of problems in infrastructure. We need a lot of resources to you know, make highways, harbors, things, stuff, stuff like that. So all the countries have some sort of problem. But let's move on to the next part. Now, if I am very fast in explaining, don't worry, guys. You will be used to it. If I'm very fast, play the video in uh, maybe 0.75 speed so you can watch the uh, entire video. And one more thing, if advertisements are playing in between, those are the earnings which I'm getting because of the videos. And that keeps me motivated because you watch the advertisement completely. Don't skip the advertisements because those advertisements is the reason I'm working on my YouTube. Uh, apart from the help which I'm giving you all, you all, uh, you all also should help me in increasing the revenue of my channel to keep me to give a lot of contents to you all in future. So let's see the uh, first topic we're going to learn finite resources. So I'm going to zoom a bit so you will have a complete thing uh, what I'm going to read. All countries have resources such as water, minerals, soil, plants, animals, and people. However, in any country, there are finite quantity of these resources, which means that the quantity available is limited. As there is only a limited quantity, economics say that resources are scarce. These resources are often referred to as four factor of production, land, labor, capital, enterprise. So now if you see that in all the countries, there's always limited resources. So this limited resources is the reason we say it as finite resources. So in simple terms, they are, you don't want to learn the entire topic. Just remember finite resource means limited resources and under limited resources, there are four things, which is the limited resource for any production that is land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. What you need to underline if you have a textbook, underline land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and say that resources are scarce, and these are known as factors of production. So we also say in short terms, uh, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship as LLCE, if you can remember in an easy way. So moving on to the point, resources are scarce in some countries than others. For example, in some, some African countries, there are serious shortages of fertile soil and water. This means that food production is inadequate. Even when the resource exists, a country may not be capable of exploiting them. For example, Ethiopia struggles to produce enough food for its population because only about 4% of its fertile land is irrigated. The problem is not a shortage of water, but the failure to exploit some of, uh, some of its huge rivers such as Awash and Blue Nile. The country does not have the financial resource to invest in projects that would make use of water for agriculture. So in simple terms, they are saying that uh, certain countries have enough resources, but they don't have financial resources to make use of the resource what they have in order to get the resource what they need for their society. So if you take Ethiopia as a good example, they said that they have, uh, you know, almost 4% of the land is only irrigated. So entire land is not properly used. Why they don't use? Because they don't have enough money. So if they have that particular financial resource, of course, they can use the resources properly. So finite resources speaks about limited things. So all the countries has limited resources. So they should use their limited resources in a particular way where they can maximum utilize and bring out people's necess necessities to be uh, met. So let's move on to the next part then we have. So we have problem of scarcity is what we are speaking, which is finite, having an end or limit, fertile soil ground that is capable of producing crops. So we have the next part we are going to yeah, we are going to speak about which is going to be unlimited wants. Moving on to the next part. Unlimited wants. Economists distinguish between needs and wants. Needs are the basic requirement for human survival. Some of these needs are physical, include water, food, warmth, shelter, and clothing. If these needs cannot be satisfied, eventually humans would cease to exist. In some countries in the world, do People do die because such needs cannot be met. So you might see that many people are dying in certain countries because people's needs are not met. Now, needs are basic essential things. For me, this drink is a need because I'm hungry, so I'm drinking it. But want is not like that. I'm drinking, uh, uh, you can see this, I'm drinking uh, dual juice. You know what is dual juice and how to say. It. So this is a 
some sort of a very important juice for me. So I am taking a wand. I can take mango. I can take any flavors I like. So a juice is a need. Means what type of juice I'm selecting, it becomes a wand. So anyway, moving on to the point. In addition to basic needs, humans also have other desires. These are called wants and may include more holidays abroad, a better house, more meals out, a bigger car, new golf clubs, a better education, improved healthcare, and clean environment. These wants are unlimited or infinite. So people's needs can be limited because eating is limited, sleeping is limited, uh, health is limited, so your clothes are limited. But the way you are going to dress is going to be unlimited. So that's what we are saying now, when you're going to go on a car, when you want to travel, you might love to buy a car. But which type of car? It can be Ducati or Bugatti, whatever the model you're going to choose based on that. I don't know Ducati have a car or not, but Bugatti have a car. So Bugatti or maybe Mercedes or maybe Audi, whatever the car you're going to select, that gives you an infinite unlimited want. People always want more whatever their current circumstances. It is human nature. The problem is made worse because many of the things that people want have to be replaced. Consumers regularly replace cars, computers, shoes, clothes, and furniture, for example, either because they are no longer functional or because better or more fashionable versions have become available. Now, they're saying that people's need, people's wants always get changes because when the era of technology is changing, people's need is also changing. Today, you might see people used to sell a lot of stuff through online, but today drop shipping is there. So different ways of selling the products are also available. So that's also part of unlimited wants. So moving on to the next part, you can see. So activity one, case study needs and wants. I'm not going to go for every activity and read it because I will only read whichever I feel important and whichever is important to the content. How might the two images in figure 1.3 illustrate the difference between needs and wants? You see these people, they also need the food. They also need, uh, these people are like a moderate, maybe a rich family. They also need the food, but the way they are eating and the way they are so concerned, they need rice, they need, you know, chicken, burgers, something which will addict, addicted to the particular taste. Why are resource finite? Because resources are limited in nature and it is due to scarcity. That's why resources are finite. So you can see that. So we are going to learn a main important thing, the topic called basic economic problem now. All countries have to deal with economics, but economy is called the basic economic problem. The problem summarized in figure 1.4 occurs because the world's resources are scarce or finite and people's wants are infinite. Demand for resources is greater than their supply. As, as a result, decisions have to be made about how to allocate a nation's scarce resources between different users. This is what the study of economy, economics is all about. So now what they're trying to say is about if you have resources available in a country, how do you scatter that resources to a particular need? Now you take government has certain resources. So if government has resources, it can be financed. They can decide they need to build a hospital or they need to build a road. They need to decide they need to build a harbor or they need to build an airport. So when they take this decision, this is where we say this allocation of resources are taking place. So basic economic problems is that all the country have problems when it comes to resources. But how are they going to manage those resources is taught under basic economic problem. So if, they, if the country has infinite wants with the limited resources, they need to ensure that they can give the maximum utilization of the resources what they have. So you can see this is what the study of economic is all about. Infinite bonds is higher than finite or scarce resources. So demand is always higher, supply is lower. So, uh, supply is lower. So basic economic problems is addressed by three things. The first one they say, what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce. Now this is the important area, and I would say this can be tested a uh, uh, quite a good mark. Most of the papers I have seen that what to produce, how to produce, whom to produce, always repetitively has been tested. So this is an important area. When I say important, it's completely important, guys. Don't miss it. Now you can see also see here a few reasons uh, definitions they have given basic economic problem allocation of a nation's scarce resources between competing users that represent infinite bonds scarce resources amount of resources available when supply is limited so these are definitions which are i have already explained so if you can you know take a whistle board or whistle board and uh, you just need to Drop down the things which you see it in subject vocabulary because you can refer it later whenever you feel it is convenient to you. So general vocabulary says that allocate means you are desire to decide officially that a particular amount of money, time, etc. should be used for a particular purpose. So we have, ex I have explained that particular thing. So let's move on to the next part of this topic. To overcome the basic economic problem, important decisions have to be made. 
The number one is what to produce. So whenever the country is having the limited resources, they need to go with these three questions because that is how basic economic problems are mitigated or resolved. So how what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce will help you how to manage the resource what the, what the country is actually having. So first thing, because it is impossible to produce all the goods that people want, a country must decide which goods will be produced. For example, should resource be used to provide more libraries, build more schools, expand the armed forces, make more cars, build more houses, construct more roads, make more toys, print more books, increase state pensions or train more doctors. So these are the type of questions they might have. Like Because the country is having limited resource, they need to be very concerned what type of products they're going to produce. Is it going to be a consumer good or capital good? Consumer good means day-to-day -day consumption of a product. Capital good means a long-term consumption, consumption of a product. Now, for example, a library can be a capital good. Uh, a book can be a consumer good because people are going to use it. So government or the company or the suppliers should decide what they are going to produce. How to produce? Goods can be produced using a variety of different production methods. The four factors of production can be organized in different ways to produce the same good. But I would say how to produce is kind of categorized into two. So you all need to take a note, take your textbook and start writing with me. The two ways is, well, number one is going to be labor intensive. Number two is going to be capital intensive. So now what is this labor intensive and capital intensive? Labor intensive is where you're using the labors to produce a product. Capital intensive, you are using the machines to produce a product. So when you produce, you need to take the decision, do I need to use the labors or do I need to take the capital? That's how you are taking a decision. For whom to produce, once goods have been produced, there has to be a method of distribution this means that the goods have to be shared in some way between members of the population. For example, should everyone get exactly the same quantities or should some receive more than the other? So when you produce a product, you need to know, is it going to be, uh, is the resource going to go to the people or is that resource going to the people who have money or is that resource going to the people who does not have anything? So you need to decide for whom you are producing the product finally. And then let's move on to the next part. So I hope you understood this particular three question. What to produce, how to produce, whom to produce is a part of basic economic problem. So put that into your mind. Let's move on to the next part. So general vocabulary, distribution, act of sharing things among a large people of people in a planned way. Whichever approach is used to solve basic economic problems, all decision makers are faced with choices. Resources often have number of alternative uses. As a result, people have to make a choice about which way to use them, individual producers and government face this choice. For example, I can either drink this uh, drink or I can drink water. So my way of energy is the choice I make. So when I make a choice, I should always remember when I drink my uh, mango juice, for example, I am losing the chance of drinking the water. So what I'm losing is what we say opportunity cost. Now that's what they have given here, the term, deciding between alternate use of scarce resource. So opportunity cost means what? The next best alternative foregone. So in simple terms, if I say OC means the next foregone. Okay. So in simple terms, if I say what you are losing when you are gaining something, that's what we say opportunity cost. So this is point, this is the point where we say you have a choice. You need to take a decision. So that taking decision is a part of opportunity cost. Now let's see. One by one, the point, the options they are given. Individual have to choose how to spend their limited budget. For example, a university student, after all living costs have been made, may have 50 pounds left at the end of the week. The student would like to buy some new books, 20 pounds, get the train home for the weekend, 30 pounds, go out for a meal with friends, 30 pounds, buy some computer software, 20 pounds, or buy a new pair of design jeans, 50 pounds. Clearly, a choice has to be made because all of these goods together would cost 150 pounds. So you need to take that. If he's going to choose maybe uh, maybe going with friends out for 30 pounds, uh, go out for a meal with 30 pounds and buying a computer software for 20 pounds, his 50 pounds will be utilized. So when you, you when he takes these two things, if he takes these two things, I'm sorry, this particular thing, $30 and $20, he might use the other $100 things, which is going to be designer jeans, uh, get trained to, for, for home to the weekend or maybe buy some new books this is all he will miss so that's a part of the main uh, understanding of opportunity cost so let's move on to the next choice what they have given 
A choice has to be made because all of these goods together would cost 150 pounds. Producers may have to choose between spending 100,000 on advertising training, his work course, or buying a new machine. So they might consider, do they need to spend on the training of the employees or they, do they need to buy a machine instead of the instead of training the laborers? The government may have to decide whether to spend 5,000 million on increasing welfare benefits, building new hospitals, providing better care for mentally ill or building a new motorway. So it's better to build a hospital or a motorway, which is better for the government. They will all, always need to take a decision. When making such choices, individual firms and government will face a cost once the choice has been made. This is called the opportunity cost. So what you are losing when you are selecting something, that's part what we say is as opportunity cost. This cost arises because a sacrifice has to be made when making a choice. If the government in the example above can replace its spending desires in order of preference, the opportunity cost can be identified. Once the government has chosen the best alternative, the opportunity cost will be the benefit lost from the next best alternative. Assume that the government spending desires are placed in order of preference as below. Now, if you see that uh, when, when the government is choosing a hospital instead of motorway, motorway becomes the opportunity cost because they have chosen the hospital. What students do in exams, they go and write hospital as the opportunity cost, which is wrong. Opportunity cost is not what you choose, it's what you lose. So what you choose is not a part of opportunity cost. Now, there are a few things the government is considering. Okay, uh, it's, it's first better to construct the motorway. Second, it's better to go with the hospital. Third, it's better to increase the welfare benefit. For, fourth, it is going to improve the care of mental illness. So they have a way. In this example, the new motorway is the government preferred choice. Therefore, the 5,000 million will be allocated to this project. The opportunity cost in this case is the benefit lost from not building the new hospital. That is the benefit lost from the next place alternative. So you can see that they, had, they didn't build the hospital because on this particular thing they decided to invest on the motorway so opportunity cost is the next best alternative given when making a choice so you can see that uh, case study opportunity cost is given so i don't think that this is preferably a good thing to go ahead and uh, read it and do it of course guys you know we are going to learn the entire textbook so why do we spend on opportunity cost case studies and you know read it and take a lot of time so we'll move on to the next part we are not learning in school we are learning in a tuition under commerce with Mac, and you're going to learn the past papers directly with me. So I will pitch all those things on the papers. So don't worry, whenever I skip a, skip a most uh, probably case study, don't worry. I will be touching this in your papers when we are doing. So then we are going to move on to production possibility because one of the important areas which I feel every student must learn. So let's start this particular thing, production possibility curves. So what is this production possibility curves? So let's start the production possibility curve. I know that this uh, particular video is taking a lot of time. It's okay, guys. Let's start doing learning these things. Though it takes time, we learn it properly because you need to draw these curves properly in your papers. Designing which goods to produce and the concept of opportunity cost can be illustrated using production possibility curves. A PPC shows the different combination of two goods that can be produced if all resources in a country are fully used. It shows the maximum quantities of, good, of goods that can be produced. A PPC for a country is shown in figure 1.6. It is assumed that the country can produce consumer goods or capital goods. What does the PPC show? So now let's see 1.6. Okay, so in simple terms, if I say, uh, always remember when you are drawing production possibility curve, the assumption says that you can draw only two things under production possibility curve. Now this is a production possibility curve, this entire graph you are seeing here. So either one side you should take it as consumer good and either one side you should consider it as capital good. As I already explained this type of two goods, meaning consumer good is a good which is consumed for person's consumption directly. For example, if I use, if I produce this purse, this purse is my purse, so I'm using for myself, then it's a personal consumption, it's a consumer good. But if I use this laptop for a business purpose, then it's capital good. Or maybe, uh, or maybe in simple terms, in economics, uh, if you use a product for a long term, most probably a road, a railway track, something like that considered as a capital good, according to the economic source. Now, coming right to this point, they have given at 16, your production, when you're producing consumer goods 16, actually you can't produce anything because you will be producing zero capital goods. This is what you need to know. Know the curves properly, okay? And if you're producing eight products, maximum you can produce uh, capital goods 8 means your consumer goods will go to 0. So when you produce one thing at the maximum, you will lose the other thing at maximum. But we can't present that. So what we do, they are saying that here it can be any numbers in between. So I think it is 14. So when you are producing 14 units of uh, cap consumer goods, you are producing 4 capital goods. When you are producing 12 units of consumer goods, you are producing 7, most probably 7 
uh, capital goods. When you produce eight consumer goods, you are producing uh, seven capital goods. But the problem is when you are producing consumer goods 12, you can't exactly go for this point 